Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where we test out every item that we build. Today we're going to start out with the drums of war. I believe it's time to try to take on a freighter, maybe some raiders and some spiders. I'm going to start out by building a unique station. At first it's going to start out as like a large ship, but once you put it into position, you can convert it to a station and it won't move anywhere. It's going to be a strategic strong point against any freighter or drones that try to attack us. Luckily, I found this asteroid that has two different gold deposits. I don't really need the gold, but it's interesting. I'm going to build the ship connected to the asteroid initially, but then disconnect it later on. This way it'll help hold it into position as we're adding items to it because, as most people know, when you build in space and you add more weight, it can actually shift or move every time you put motion into it. That should be about it. I'm measuring... 15 blocks across from the center and 15 blocks down from the center as well which will give me basically a 30 by 30 cube even though we're not making it a full cube as always i run a lot of conveyor belts all the way through in order to make sure that whatever we connect in the future we'll be able to deposit the correct ammunition or elements that need to go through each item That should about do it for half the platform. Now just to build the other half. And we're about done. This is a lot of blocks. So if you're worried about PCU, I definitely recommend either doing it on survivor mode or doing it in creative mode, but set your blocks to unlimited. This is going to take quite a bit, and you'll rack them up pretty quick after that. I've also outlined the entire square with conveyor belts. That way we can connect any gun that we want or anything else that may require a conveyor belt. When it comes to certain things, before building the rest of the structure, I'm actually going to mount the guns. That way we know that it's not going to interfere with any of the walls that we put up later. Mind you, this is going to be a station later on, so we want to defend it fairly well. It doesn't have to have the biggest guns, and it doesn't have to have a gun every two blocks or anything like that. Just enough to shoot from a long range. I like the Gatling guns because they have a rapid fire for anything that gets within close range. And then I like the assault cannon because on a large model you can shoot up to 1400 meters away, which is 1.4 kilometers and not too bad when it comes to drones. It doesn't use any uranium for the ammunition either, just simple magnesium. I think we have a Gatling gun on every single corner. Mm, yeah, it looks good. Just add some assault cannons here. I usually don't put as many assault cannons. Even though they shoot slower, they shoot farther. And since they do shoot slower, if you had a bunch of assault cannons and say a drone was attacking you, it's not going to really move fast enough to take that drone out but a Gatling will spin around and shoot hundreds of rounds in a minute and take that same drone out a lot faster if they're within proximity of your station. And there we go, all our primary guns are loaded. So since the guns are on the central edge, what you're going to want to do is beef up the top and bottom edge of their line. 
because the drones or other ships will actually shoot your guns or try to shoot at your guns, you're going to want to beef that up. First, let's supply some power so we can see if they're all moving or not. For this, I'm just using standard large batteries, placing them into the floor. This floor is actually going to be the floor for both sides of the station. This is going to be a dual level, but they're going to be flipped from one another. And these are the heavy armor angled blocks to secure up that edge. Now, I know it doesn't completely cover the conveyor, but... We really just want it there for the debris that falls at it or some of the ammo that might not actually hit the gun but hits the side. It'll help prevent us depressurizing our system or even opening a hole to the sides where if there was another character they'd be able to get in. I purposely left these two spots open where you didn't see the angled blocks. That's going to be our double-sided hanger doors. So you're going to have a hanger door or two hanger doors on each side of the central line. The reason I do this and I'm making it double-sided instead of just one-sided or anything else is mainly for escape purposes. So if you have drones attacking the top, you can always sneak onto the other side, flip around, get into an escape pod, and fly out of there, and they will still be on the other side of your massive station. This ensures that you have a higher potential of getting the heck out of Dodge if something happens. These are 3x3 three three bulletproof windows, basically. And I did make this mistake before, but see these square blocks I put? Well, this glass was actually connected to the square blocks. And then once I removed it, I didn't realize until later on that they weren't connected to the ship at all. In fact, parts of my walls were floating away, which was kind of ridiculous, but I was able to rebuild the entire thing. I saved you the expense of having to waste your time watching that though. For everything I do on one side, I'm going to repeat on the other side of this ship. See, it looks decent and it seems like they're all connected, but in reality they're not. Because we don't have any gravity affecting it yet, they aren't actually touching, but they are touching. All right, and the same thing at the top of these windows, or these glass panes, I'm putting heavy duty angled blocks. Again, if they shoot the windows, at least our structure should still stay intact because we have the heavy duty blocks instead of having lightweight blocks. Otherwise, if they take out a window, it'll take out a lightweight block at the same time. But with these heavy duty ones, they may just warp, but they still hold together. Looks like it's coming along nicely. Not too bad, not too bad. All of my corners or joining positions on the exterior of this station are heavy blocks.
Now I'm just going to do one round on the inside of this. And after that, I'm just going to leave the top and bottom area glass. We'll have structural connecting members, but the rest is going to be glass. And the reason why I do this, and I don't think most people do this, but when you have it glass, enemy ships and tend to target the glass faster than they target the rest of the structure for some reason. Well, in my case, in my experience, they have. They can sit there and blast all day through the glass. I don't really care because the structure will still stay together as long as you still have those heavy blocks connecting one end to another. This means after you finally can destroy the drone or whoever it is shooting at you, you can easily rebuild because you just have to replace the glass. Mm, looks like I'm gonna finally have to disconnect this from the asteroid just so I can put these conveyors. There's an equal amount of conveyors on each side and both halves of the station are of equal distance and height. It can get quite a confusing on which side you're on when you're building a contraption like this. But as I see it, the sun's only facing one of the sides. So if I've already done everything to the light side, then I just need to change it to the dark side. All right, so this section, I'm gonna modify probably multiple times just to see how it works out. But these are gonna be where the hangar doors go. In a sense, we'll be able to have, say, one side as drones and another side as an actual fighter ship or something mounted so we can choose which ones we want to fly. For drones, if you want to do a long attack, basically a sneak attack, you could launch a drone out and say guide it to be 8,000 miles away as long as you're using the antenna that's on your ship. If you try to use just the suit antenna it's not going to go very far and you're fairly limited on your range. Oh, and along any of these conveyors, you want to put another steel block because if you don't, you won't be able to pressurize later. Conveyors do not make a perfect seal unless they're in conjunction with another item, such as a block. I know I've made the mistake before where I put conveyors with the glass directly and that was when I was trying to convert an asteroid into a living habitat, which worked. But even in that one, I ended up having to put steel blocks along the conveyors because the windows will not match up with it. There will still be gaps and you will not be able to pressurize if you do that. Hmm, just got to figure out which blocks. It's confusing sometimes when you have the lightweight block and the heavy block next to each other on your keypad. I think that's fairly decent. Build in all these little holes here and there. I did not put two blocks at the bottom there just because I want to put doors in here later on. So they still have angle blocks in them. 
There we go. Door, 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 all the way down. I did cut out the floor because of the height difference. I couldn't put two sets of hanger doors up here otherwise. So I ended up having to cut out the floor on one side and put these hanger doors on the ceiling and on the floor. But on the other side, on the flip side, it's going to be reversed because now I won't have the space for two hanger doors again, but only one. And you don't really want it out of the floor because then it's not level with the floor. You can't drive over it. You'd have to put ramps or something and it just looks gaudy. Now that seems decent. Now, if we build a little control station, this isn't going to be the permanent control station. I'm just plopping it so I can assign the hangar doors to their own grouping. I find it's much easier to only finish what you're currently looking at and then name it and then finish building the next one. You can set them all up, but it's much easier to grab them, know which ones you're grabbing and assigning when only certain ones are fully completed. All right, I didn't see anything that time. Try this again. In this purpose, I'm labeling the top, the bottom, left and right hanger door sets. Later, we'll actually put a button panel so we can just simply select whichever door we're at. Or you can assign two doors per button panel. It doesn't really matter. Okay, looks like I missed three of them somehow. Okay, gonna have to probably go and go back and reset the grouping. Sometimes that does happen and, it, like I said, it is much easier if you're only finishing a few of them at a time and testing instead of doing all of them at one time and then trying to guess what the heck hanger door it is. Same thing with hinges, rotors, anything of that sort. I could have set a divider wall and use something other than these hanger doors to make it look more fancy. But then you'd have to add merge blocks. You can use merge blocks to seal it off, or you just wouldn't be able to pressurize that section. But I don't want a divider wall because it's kind of annoying having to go through multiple doors all the time to get back and forth to wherever your shop is. It also slows you down. So if you're in battle and you really need to transverse from one point to another, you don't want everything stopping you along the way. All right, that looks like all four doors are done. You can see we're diagonally from each other. They're either the same size, larger than the other two, like the top left one is the same as the lower right one, vice versa. Looks like everything on the outside for the most is done until we do the glass. And the glass is fairly easy. I'm just going to use the three by three, maybe some two by threes just to fill in the gaps and cover this area. The great thing about having glass also is if you get attacked and they shoot out the glass, you can still fly your escape pod out if your doors don't work. So if they kill all your power but the glass is gone, you can easily get out. You don't have to try to drill through a bunch of steel construction in order to get out. I'm placing these conveyors down to build a few oxygen generators. These are basically tubes with a bunch of plants in them. But it does help to rejuvenate your oxygen, especially if you're away from any asteroid and it's a stationary ship where it's difficult to get ice. I don't plan on traveling very far with this thing. We're only going to go to the most efficient range we can where we see the most traffic for freight ships and stuff like that. And then after that, we're not going to make a trip to an asteroid or anything for ice, so we'd have to rely on a cargo ship to replenish us, or the ship that I flew here with.
Yeah, I'm gonna have to use a two by three for that section. Let's see. I always want the smaller of the panels inward towards the center of the ship and the big ones outward. I don't think it really matters structurally, but it kind of goes with the design better. You don't want just random 2x3s and 3x3s just spaced out wherever. Design-wise, it makes it more aesthetic if you have the 2x3s or, you know, the smaller size along the inner edge towards the center. And in this case, I'm going to do one on the outer edge and the inner edge, so it kind of looks like an L on each section. These do take a lot of silicone, so I suggest doing some mining ahead of time, and I think it burned through about 11,000 liters of silicone just making the panels. Which isn't bad, if you're mining on an asteroid or if you're mining on any of the planets, you can get that pretty quick just by regular mining. You don't have to actually go seek silicone to build it. Well, that looks about right. I fixed all the corners on here too, if you happen to notice that. They're trimmed in and reinforced. Let's just remember to put these four doors in or we won't be able to pressurize anything. I purposely put these doors where the assault cannon is. I don't know why. I just thought it would be interesting to do so. It's not like the assault cannon is really going to help protect anything, but it might discourage somebody from entering your ship because they won't be able to tell necessarily, is that an entrance or is that just the big assault cannon pointed at me? Okay, last things on the outside I think are just ion drives. I'm not using big ion drives, just the general sized small ion drives. We don't need to move in a hurry with this thing since it's going to be a station. We just need to be able to propel it and maneuver over to whatever location is going to suit us best for our attacks. Yeah, I keep making that mistake. I have too much stuff in my inventory to be able to continue to build anything. Hmm, how can I get rid of this without having to go all the way back? Eh, I'll just build a random block here, see how it works. That should be enough space. I already had a lot of steel to build these ion drives, and then I realized I have to destroy blocks or recycle blocks in order to make them or place them, so... It fills up my inventory quick. I think that's every corner now. So every possible direction. We might not get there fast, but we'll get there. In order to convert when this is a large ship to a station, you have to be 100% zero on your MS. You can't be moving anywhere. As soon as you're completely still, then you can go on the info page in your terminal and select convert to station. There is a way if you go to the advanced settings where when you convert a large ship to a station, you can convert from a station back to a large ship, but it's not a guarantee. Usually once you convert it to a station, it's pretty much a done deal. Now what I'm putting up here, and I've seen this video somewhere else and I cannot remember who it was, but these are basically training dummies. They're like mini targets, you know? So if a drone comes on, they might see it as a target and shoot that instead, which we would prefer because these things are self-generating. As long as you have enough steel plates available within your inventory and they're connected to a conveyor system, once you shoot the darn thing, it's gonna grow back. So the only things I'm not going to put on both sides of the ship are the refinery and assembler. I'm only going to put them on the top side. Because for the most part, we'll access through a connector on the bottom 
and we don't need all that extra weight or waste materials and block size. Yeah, I don't think it'll go there. It just doesn't look right. How about I just put it on the other side? Mainly because I'm trying to use the speed modules and putting speed modules on this thing the way it was set up with the refinery would block the refinery from having speed modules. You can fit a total of four modules onto any refinery and two modules onto any assembler. How does this thing fit? Oh, there we go. All right, that looks good. Looks kind of exposed around here, and we're gonna need a way to pressurize this thing. So I'm putting an O2 H2 module on each side, so when we add ice, we can pressurize this entire hangar area. Plus it kind of cuts it in. You know, I didn't plan it that way, but it's made it almost a perfect cube over here. Now, I know we're gonna be stationary, but we're probably gonna have to control the yaw and different directions of travel for this thing so i'm going to just throw three big gyros on top of here and i finish off the deal for the cube since we're not moving that fast you don't need a very strong gyro system i know it's a lot of weight but you're going to maneuver very slowly either way Get rid of this, and I think I'll build a utility cockpit just so we can recharge the suit and start getting oxygen pressure into this place. Now these, these are interior walls. Interior walls don't have much for structure wise, but it's gonna block all our main components, so it's harder to get to. If an enemy were to get on board, they'd have to shoot through these interior walls first before they could get to our refiner or our assembler or any of the gyros or O2 generators. And most of the time when people enter your ship, they're not going to be carrying a tank with them. They're just going to have rifles or pistols with them. So shooting these walls with a rifle or pistol is going to take a very long time to get through. Just adding some aesthetic lights so we can see around this place. Uh, looks kind of like a tesseract of some sort. Okay, let's see. What else do we need to cover on this thing? Oh yeah, interior turrets. In case anybody gets into your ship, these interior turrets don't really take on big ships or drones or anything. But if there's personnel, or if we end up with spiders in this darn thing, or wolves, it'll take them down. Let's see, two on each side should cover it. I don't really have a way of covering the rest of the area, just because I didn't put conveyors along the top. Which is fine. Either way, it's pointing the doors and the control center. So when you think about it, those are going to be more of a main target than the sides anyways, because the sides don't have anything on them. Now, we just have to light this place up. A lot of times my ships are pretty dingy for some reason. I need to figure out better lighting for them. Looks like we got all the dummies working on here. You can see that they're all placed. Now I'm gonna run them on the top and the bottom before I worry about that lighting.
It does take a while, but it doesn't take too many resources to build these. Just kind of zip right through, and if you turn around, they should all pop up. Bingo. Now those are going to be our main target areas where you'll see drones or freighter defense systems shooting at. Instead of it being directly at the player or at any of your other vital items, it's kind of going to lead them to your weapons since it goes around the base of it. In this station, I'm not going to run nuclear power because uranium is kind of hard to come by, even if you found it before. So I'm just running these hydrogen engines to power the batteries. We don't need a lot of power when it comes to a station because you're not running that many things. Let's see, just add two hydrogen, I guess, along with these oxygen ones. So they point in four directions and it kind of looks symmetrical. There we are. Alright, we just need to put ice in them. I didn't grab any ice yet in order to convert to hydrogen, but we have some on the other ship. I think that's about it on this. Oh yeah, the lights. Where can I put these lights? If I put them on the conveyor, then it might get the in the way of the interior turrets. I'll start with the sides, and I'm using double lights on those. And they kind of light up the area, but they're not that bright. And then I put two rows of them over on the other lines between the interior turrets, but it's still pretty dark. You can see from the outside, it's slightly lit up. Not as bright as what I'd like to. Oop. <laughs> uh, I hit my head again. Classic. It still kind of does the job. Let's see, these dummies actually work. Looks like it's offset at its base for some reason. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's just the way they were placed or the game. Oh, well, I was able to shoot it off. I suppose a drone with a Gatling turret or anything like that is going to blow it off even faster, though. It just pops right back up. Boy, I tell you, for an enemy, that would be very discouraging. Come on, guy, take it on. Pretty quick. I guess we got two of them that time. I wasn't paying attention. Well, that's about it. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you are able to build your own station and prepare for war. Please share any of your comments or suggestions in the comment section. I appreciate it.